Hello. Um, I should tell you up front that if uh, I sound a little bit strange in this video, I've got a few mouthfuls, it's a little bit painful. So uh, I've got a glass of water here just to deal with that. Um, I was in two minds whether or not to make this video because I wanted to sort of consider what angle I wanted to take this from. Um, I make a lot of videos on topical subjects because they interest me and uh, I want to share views with anyone who may be watching. Um, I find that sometimes sharing reflections on something can uh, can be useful because I've personally seen things from a different angle or um, considered things from a different angle when I've seen other people's opinions so maybe people can see me and they might think I'm full of shit or they might think yeah maybe he raises a good point um, there can be few conflicts in the world more divisive than the Arab-Israeli conflict and if we want to be specific the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict so at the time I'm uploading this um, the Israeli IDF operation Protective Edge, I believe it's called, is ongoing. At the time of speaking, the casualties are 103 Palestinian dead, uh, 600 wounded, and 22 Israeli wounded. Um, this latest cycle of Middle East violence, uh, Holy Land violence to be precise, or maybe not so Holy Land, began a few weeks ago with the abduction and murder of three Israeli boys. I'm not saying that how, that's how the deeper conflict began, of course I'm not saying that, I'm just saying the latest round of the latest cycle of violence. And then of course there was a young Palestinian man who was killed. The Palestinians believed that was a revenge killing and that sparked this, um, this cycle. I've just watched a very powerful documentary film, um, Death in Gaza. And it's during the first uh, Intifada, filmed in 2003, and it culminates in one of the cameramen, uh, British journalist James Miller, being killed by IDF forces. No one's ever been prosecuted for that. Um, their intention was to also make a film about the uh, Israeli side but that never happened um, and they made a good point they they didn't want to bring the Israeli and Palestinian suffering into the same film because then it would be too easy for people to make comparisons that they want to show that these different lives uh, and that would have detracted from the purpose so basically the crew uh, follows the lives of three Palestinian children living in the Gaza Strip a 16 year old girl, a 12 year old boy and I believe an 8 year old boy. Um, it was made 11 years ago so they're going to be young adults now if, if they're still alive. Which sounds like a morbid thing to say but in this part of the world it isn't, it isn't inconceivable. Um, there's no doubt about it, Gaza is an absolutely dismal place and in all the recent confrontations between Israel and the Palestinians, the vast majority of fatalities have been Palestinian. So the bulk of opinion is anti-Israel. Like I say, this is one of the world's most divisive conflicts, so what I find is if you take a position on it, you're automatically pigeonholed one way or the other. Now I've come out in the past with pro-Israeli statements and uh, people probably regard me as, as a stooge for Israel. I don't believe I am. I don't believe I'm a sycophant for the state of Israel. Um, what I'm trying to do as an outsider is just try and look at this from my perspective. I might well be completely wrong. Um, but I'm trying to look at this as objectively as possible and try and allow common sense to come into the equation. Now, one of the common arguments about this conflict is one that is a, a bit stupid in my opinion. 
stupid because it doesn't the question doesn't actually help anyone and the question is about Israel's legitimacy as a nation state um, the common argument being that Israel is built on land taken from the Palestinians now you can go way 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 back in history and talk about the rights and wrongs of who really owns the land you can go back to ancient times the kingdom of Israel etc but talking of the modern nation state the common argument is that it's illegal now if that's your starting point that's problematic because if you question the very existence of a state how is that question going to help anyone because wherever you think of it it's a fact and Israel is not going to go away anytime soon the existence of the state of Israel whatever you think of it is a fact so to open up as a starting point the illegal Israeli state is counterproductive it doesn't help anyone it doesn't help the Palestinians by asking that question whatever the rights and wrongs of Israel's existence are and I for one am not convinced that it is illegal I'm not saying I know everything about it and maybe I need to be enlightened on the subject but and incidentally one thing I really want to stress I am in no way trying to make this video extremely comprehensive I am in no way trying to claim that I know everything and no doubt my opinions will piss off both sides so in no way am I trying to claim that I know everything but the reason I wanted to make this was because when you look around the world when you look at other conflicts there's conflicts far far deadlier than this one um, it's estimated about 21,300 approximately people have died on both sides in the last half century half century of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict I'm not talking about the Israeli-Arab conflict, that's a bigger figure, that's about 100,000. But the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Now, I'm not trivialising that. But when you look at other wars of the 20th century, I'll give you an example. The Mozambique Civil War, half a million people killed. When you look at some contemporary conflicts, it's estimated thousands have been killed in Nigeria this year alone. Um... In the end of 2012, it was estimated as many as 10,000 Rohingya people may have been killed in Burma, Rohingya Muslims. It's only an estimate, it's not a proven claim, but the point I'm making here is there's far deadlier conflicts in the world. Yesterday, the Syrian civil war reached a grim milestone. It's estimated over 170,000 people have died in that conflict. So, I cannot help but think it is slightly strange that this particular conflict gets so much attention one of the common claims I've seen is um, from both sides claim that the media is against them uh, I hear all the time from the Palestinian side and the Israelis also claim that there's a biased media but if anything this conflict actually gets more attention than many other conflicts in the world um, I mean one of the common claims is that Palestinian deaths are ignored now in the last week I have seen a lot of BBC CNN reports on Palestinian deaths so that's a slightly baseless claim I mean wh why would I know about Palestinian deaths if that hadn't been reported my instinct is that there's two sparks that started this particular round of violence and they both come to both sides not sticking by the peace process on one hand is an Israeli settlement building which I strongly oppose I think it's inflammatory and I think it does contravene peace agreements on the other is the fact that you're, Israel is dealing with an organization in Hamas that denies its very existence its very right to exist and which has basically never stopped its rocket fire or very very few periods where it has so Israel is dealing with this constant bombardment of rockets and contrary to popular opinion they're not toys 
the only reason I think uh, I've just been speaking to someone debating with someone who was pointing out it's not an equal situation more Palestinians have been killed but the only reason we're not seeing higher Israeli deaths or no deaths is because Israeli defenses are so effective if the Iron Dome didn't exist I could it could easily be conceived that there would be Israeli deaths and that is not saying that Israeli lives are worth more, worth more than Palestinian lives. It is just an explanation as to why there isn't that sort of balance. Also is the logical factor that Gaza is a very densely populated area. And when Israel, when Israel targets Hamas fighters, inevitably civilians die. You know, I've seen a lot of grisly pictures online with children with the legs blown off and you'd have to be a pretty cold bastard not to be moved by that and it does make it very difficult to try to say anything in favour of Israel given that frankly it is Israel that is doing that but part of the documentary I've just watched showed um, one interesting segment where the reporter said to Hamas fighters um, isn't it dangerous to put a young boy in this position? They were letting the the kid hold a Katusha rocket, a rocket. I don't know if it was a Katusha, but a rocket. And she was making the point, isn't it? You know, aren't you brainwashing children to be militarized? His response was, "Don't worry, sister. There's plenty of children where he came from." In other words, the idea that um, Hamas values Palestinian lives is questionable. I believe their hatred of Israel is so strong that there is basically a cult of death in the Gaza Strip. And this is not vilifying the Palestinians. I believe that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of Palestinians who are normal people who want to get on with their lives, but they're living in these very difficult circumstances. And they're being brought up brutalized by war. And it's the same on the Israeli side. People show were showing photographs earlier of, look at these sadistic Israelis. Sort of, uh, I showed some Israelis on a hillside looking at the bombardment, and it looked like they were enjoying themselves. Well, that's pretty crude, of course. But the point here is the war, the conflict is brutalizing both sides. So the fundamental question to all of this is, what ends this? I have long believed that a two-state solution is the only way. And I do believe Israel has made that difficult. I do believe Israel is also responsible for a lot of the problems it faces. Because, especially with a hawk like Netanyahu in power, Israel has not made a two-state solution easy. So, you have Abbas, who I believe is in a very difficult situation. Israel is making his job very, very hard. On one hand, they're criticising him for not containing the militants. On the other, they're not. They're making his uh, political position very hard. How can he sell uh, the idea of peace to the Palestinians when you have these operations that are causing huge fatalities? And there's a human factor in this. If you see your entire family wiped out, it doesn't matter what the intentions are. It doesn't matter if Israel's intentions are to... Um, target just Hamas fighters it doesn't matter if they send warning leaflets like leave your homes and so on death is death so the hatred is so deeply embedded it's it's very hard to turn this around I've seen a lot of glimmers of well a few glimmers of optimism for example there was a synagogue in London invited uh, Muslims to break their fast there as a goodwill gesture um, and I believe the mother of one of the Israeli boys who was killed invited the Palestinian parents to join in her grief. So there's these little glimmers of people with good intentions, and I would never ever criticise that. But unfortunately, I don't think it's enough to dispel just how deeply this hatred is entrenched. Um, I think... If Israel makes a ground invasion here, it would be a grave mistake. For one thing, it would hugely increase the civilian death toll, which will only, it won't do Israel any favours. It would be a situation like um, 2006. On the other hand, there is a fundamental question that needs to be asked, and there's a lot of hypocrisy in the criticism of Israel from some other countries. Um, 
When countries like Russia and China, especially Russia, criticize Israel, you have to think of the incredible hypocrisy there because there is no other nation in the world that would deal with uh, the number of rocket attacks that Israel has to face. It doesn't matter if they have civilian casualties or not because the intention is there. Those rockets are designed to kill Israeli civilians. That is the purpose. So what other country in the world would put up with the sheer number of attacks that Israel faces and be expected to do nothing? Look at the way China has responded to its terrorist attacks this year. Has China held restraint? Has China thought, oh no, we'll just hold back and see what happens? No. They banned Ramadan and they uh, have enacted a massive crackdown. Look at how Russia deals with terrorism by several brutal wars in the Caucasus. So when I see Russia today criticising Israel, I cannot help but think what incredible hypocrisy there. And the same goes for other Western countries. Britain, France, America. There's no way any of those countries would deal with that sort of situation and not respond. So the claim that Israel responds with excessive force, I think sometimes it's true. Well, often it's true. But the question has to be asked, what exactly is Israel supposed to do? I'm talking about the rocket attacks. I mean, the Iron Dome is effective, but that doesn't mean it's cast iron guarantee that it will always be effective. And the idea that Israel should just always show restraint is absurd. On the other hand, I think, like I say, um, Netanyahu is making a two-state solution very, very difficult. And the Palestinians are basically being brutalised because, and this is not a vilification of the Palestinian people, like I say, the vast majority of Palestinians are normal people who want peace, but when they're stateless, when they're living in those sort of brutal, harsh conditions, regardless of whose fault it is, this situation is going to continue. Now, I believe Hamas is responsible for a lot of the Palestinian suffering, although they would never acknowledge that because, you know, Hamas is their freedom fighters. But I, I believe Israel needs to do a lot more to commit to this two-state solution. For one thing, it's in their own interest. And for another, any group of disillusioned, brutalised, stateless people are going to be um, in a situation where there is this sort of long, protracted conflict. So I'm going to close here. Um, I never made this in video with an intention of analysing this inside out. No doubt people will comment here and say I'm full of shit or I've missed something out or what about this, what about that. It's simply not possible to cover every single thing in one video. I believe both sides have responsibility. Um, I believe the only future to this problem is a two-state solution. And I think Israel needs to make efforts to make that happen. It's no good just saying, oh, it's up to the Palestinians. Israel needs to also accept the fact that um, they need to let Abbas be in the position where he can appeal to the Palestinian people for that process. But these sort of hard-scale operations, so for example, I, I think this might well be excessive. I don't think free Israeli deaths warrants what we are seeing now. As awful as that was, I don't think it warrants this sort of scale of operation. I think Israel would be better um, maybe firing rockets back, but not this sort of large-scale bombardment. So it's very, very difficult to um, really see any end in sight to this. The depressing thing about the documentary I've just watched, that was filmed ten years ago, I'm looking at this conflict today on the news and it's very conceivable that 10 years from now we'll be seeing exactly the same thing. And it's very depressing. So maybe one reason that this conflict does get so much attention is because it is so long running. It's actually classified as a low intensity war, believe it or not. It's actually, if you look at 
Wikipedia's list of ongoing conflicts, this is classed as a low-scale conflict in that there are technically under a thousand deaths a year. That might sound like callous because we're talking about human lives, but compared to Iraq, compared to Mexico, I'm talking about the Mexican drug war, compared to Syria, for example, um, it does have a much lower mortality rate. But I think the reason, perhaps, why it's so divisive and why it does get a lot of attention is because it's so long-running. I don't know if peace in the Holy Land, peace between the Palestinians and Israelis, would solve all the Middle East problems. In fact, I highly doubt it, because there is still the Shia-Sunni schism, which is also a very deeply embedded problem. So I don't think peace between Israel and Palestine will solve the wider Middle East problems. It would be a beautiful thing if it ever happens, but that almost sounds like a bad joke, given the current situation. You know, people um, show photographs to individuals like me of dead Palestinian children as if we don't care, as if we uh, are robots. I am as distressed as anyone when I see that sort of stuff. But I don't think demonizing Israel and making it out to be the Israelis are evil and all the Palestinians are innocent, I don't think that sort of black and white analysis solves this problem. And that is just the issue with the Middle East, uh, with the Holy Land conflict, it is so complex. So, to conclude, with the current situation, regarding the current situation, I think now Israel should hold back immediately. Because the more civilian deaths rise, the more Israel is going to put itself into a position of being despised. And I think the only solution for the future is a two-state solution. But Hamas and other Palestinian militants also have responsibility. If they stop rocket attacks, Israel would have absolutely no rationale in doing what it's doing. You know, the Israelis don't just wake up in the morning and say, oh, we're going to bombard Gaza for fun. There's a context to this. And, you know, you can argue it's excessive, but the idea that, I mean, I am sure, whatever decision the Knesset makes, the IDF makes, there's heated debate about it. I'm sure there is. And, by the way, there's also a lot of, I don't have time to cover it in this video, but there's a lot of claims made about Israel being a racist state, I totally reject that. Because if you look at Israeli society, if you look at the IDF itself, in fact, the soldiers who killed James Miller were supposed to be Badouin Arabs. But they were Israeli citizens, IDF troops. So the idea that it's this, uh, I think it's misleading to sort of look at it as one Jewish state against the Muslim Middle East, that's way too simplistic. Israel itself is a very pluralistic society. And people who talk about discrimination in Israel, well, for one thing, they're ignoring the massive discrimination in Arab states, but I think it's um, it's a distortion. Israel is not a perfect society, but Israel's society, I'm not talking about Israeli foreign policy, I'm talking about Israeli society itself, I believe is far more progressive than most Arab states. If you look at some of the issues that go on in Arab states, and if you look at some of the... There's enormous hypocrisy in the Arab world in terms of the criticism of Israel whilst ignoring some of the atrocities that go on in a country like Syria. So that sort of hypocrisy does frustrate me. I'm going to leave it there.